Hi, welcome to the sixth module in the .NET Learn Wednesday series. We have started with the absolute fundamentals of learning C sharp. In this module, we'll be talking about date and time and how we can use them in the C sharp programming language. Let's get right away. Over here, I see I have Visual Studio Code open. And what I'll do is I'll open up my terminal and I will kick off a new .NET Core project as we used to. So I'll do .NET New. Console. I'll put that to 06. Dates. And time. Once that project is created, I will go ahead and open up the program.cs file. And I'll remove this over here. And I'll save my program. So what I'll do next is I'll just start writing my code. In C sharp, there is a date time data type, and that is date time. Just like that. So what I'll do is I'll give that variable a name. So I'll call it my date time. And that will be new date time. I'll save my code. What I'll do next is I can now start playing with this. So I can decide and say, I want to output the old variable to my console. So I'll decide and say, console dot write line. I'll just output it the way it comes. So that'll be my date time. That is in the wrong place. So I'll just go ahead and put it here. Right. So I can go ahead and run my program now. Let me just do a dotnet run over here. Oh, I missed the program argument, so I'll do slash dash p, and I'll put in 06, date and time. And then I'll have my program run for me now. As you can see here, I have the variable, but there's a little bit of problem. It is not outputting what it's normally supposed to. So because I use the new date time, so what I'm supposed to actually do is if I want to print out the current date and time that I am in, I just say date time dot now. That means it will get me the current time when the program is running. So if I do that, I will get the output. So the current time of recording this video is 2.34 p.m on June 24, year 2020. And I can do a whole lot with this date time variable I have here. I could check what time it was in the past. I could uh, add, check what day it would be in the future. I can output the current year, month, and date. Let's actually go ahead and do that. So what I'll go ahead and do, I'll do the console, the right line. I can just start playing with this variable here. So what I'll do now is I'll say so I'll put the time in short format. So just the dates and the time. So it's just the hour and the minute rather. So I'll go ahead and say my date time. Let me actually change this value name. And let me just copy that in here. Yep. Date time dot to short time string. What that gives me is this short value of the time variable. If I go ahead and run this, we'll see what it looks like. And the output would be this just the hour and the minutes. And look, this is using my system locale. So the current time setting and calendar setting you have on your PC uh, or whatever system this is running on when it's been running, what it will output to the console. And I could go ahead and actually also show the, the short date string. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. So I'll do dots to short date string. All right, I'll go ahead and run that. So what happens is I get the short format of the date. So I actually have been here, but I want to show us what I look like. If I actually go ahead 
I now try to output the long format of these ones. I can just go ahead and copy and paste these ones. And the only thing that will change is, um, oh, this should have been dates. And this will be data also. I'll just change from shorts. I'll change that to long. I'll also change this short to long. And I'll save my program and run it. So we can see the difference over here. So over here we have the short time. Over here we have the long time. Over here we have the short date. Over here we have the long date. So you can play around with that. Also, another fun part you could actually have is try to see what day it was, say, five years or ten years ago. So I can go ahead and say console the right line. And say the day five years ago from today was watch. So I'll do my date time dot from years sorry that would be dot add years rather so i want to add years but what i'll do now is actually add this year backwards so i'll do minus five so if i go ahead and run this let me actually go ahead and comment all these ones out let me comment these ones out and run If I do that, I will see that five years ago, this was the date. Of course, it was 2015, as you can see here. And you can see the time five years ago. If I actually want to show the exact date, all I have to do was, once I've done the removal, what I'll do is, there's also some extension, uh, some helpers I can use here. And I can just have to tell the day of the week it was. All right? So, if I go ahead and run this, it will output for me, I think, Wednesday. You can see it. It was Wednesday on this day five years ago. Let's actually check if that was right. So, I have my calendar open here. And this is 2020. This is June 2020, right here. This is June 2020. Let's go back five years. So, we go to 2015. And this is June. And if you look into June 24, this is June 24 right here, we can see that it is a witness day on our calendar. And you can look at what I was up to. Oh, I was right. Okay, I think I was reading for my exams back then in the university. You can see what I was up to five years. It was actually a witness day. And you can do this either in the future or in the past or anything. So you can actually also output specific values say for example you want to output just the year day just like i did here so i could have uh also the right line and just print out the year so i'll just rough this i can print out just the year i can print out just the month i can print out just the day of the week i can print out just the specific date also let me actually see if I can print out the week it falls into. Um, let me see that. No, I can I can do that. All right. So that was just it. So you could actually look deeper into the daytime variable, daytime data type rather, and check the things you can do with it. There's also time span. If you're working with timers, so you can and uh, specify what kind of times you want to work with. Well, we'll get a little bit more advanced, we'll actually talk uh, more on that one. So guys, thank you very much for watching this module. I'll see you in the next module. Bye.